And good evening, everyone, and welcome to Camelback Ranch in Glendale. Todd Garbison for Southwest Sports Network. It's play-by-play -play coverage of Saguaro Sabercats varsity baseball. It's the 4A1 state quarterfinals. And Saguaro, the home team, hosting the Sunny Slump Vikings. And we are underway as Colin O'Neill leads off for the Vikings. Sunny Slope comes in as the number seven seed. Saguaro, the number two seed. And the 0-1 pitch to O'Neill. Is popped up first base side and caught over on the first base side by Chris Ackman. And the leadoff hitter is retired in the sunny slope first inning. The Vikings are 20 and 8 overall. They finished 10 and 2 in their region play. And the Saguaro Sabercats 31 and 4 on the season. They went 13 and 1 in the region. And here's Robert Heath, the second baseman as Suaro moves their outfielders around a bit. And now ready to go, Robert Heath takes the first pitch high for ball one. So Colin O'Neill, the leadoff hitter, was the shortstop, Robert Heath plays second. Connor Belfiore, the pitcher, hits third. Royal Love at first base is the cleanup hitter. Casey Bowman at third, bats fifth. As that ball is hit down the right field line, that'll get into the seats out of play, and the count goes to one and one. The number six hitter for the Vikings is Michael Mahagian. He's the right fielder. Max Fabricant is in center field. He bats seventh. Ryan Oberg, the catcher, is eighth. And the number nine hitter is the left fielder, Chet Gleason. Chris Frudenberg, the starting pitcher for Saguaro, as he gets the nod here in the state quarterfinals. The 1-1 one -one pitch. And a fastball, that's high, and it's two balls and a strike. Frudenberg will try to follow up a great pitching performance from Travis Steinheiser on Saturday as the Sabercats beat Cactus Shadows in the first round of the playoff, six to nothing. As the next pitch is low and it's three and one. And that's how Saguaro advanced to this one again, a six nothing win over Cactus Shadows, the number 15 seed. Sunny Slope, the number seven seed, beat number 10 Raymond S. Kellis, seven to six. And a pitch inside and it's ball four. So Heath walks. And he's aboard at first base with one out for Connor Belfiore. Defensive alignment for the Sabercats, what we are uh, used to. It's Austin Anderson in left field, Zach Gibbons in center field, and Kyle Young in right field. The Saguaro infield, John Nimps at third. Matt Morris is the shortstop. Ben Tingley plays second base, and Chris Ackman is at first base. Brandon Demarest catching for Chris Frudenberg. And the first one to Belfiore high for ball one. One on, one out, just underway top of the first inning from Camelback Ranch in Glendale. Here's the set, the look of the runner at first base in the 1-0 pitch. That's a little bit low, and it's two balls and no strikes. Well, this venue very kind to the Saguaro Sabercats. This is the field that Saguaro won their 4A state championship on last year. Stepping a throw to first base and the runner back. And if Saguaro continues to win, they will continue to play here at Camelback Ranch. There's a check swing and a roller to third. Nimps has it. The only play is to first base and he fires it over there in time, and there's two away. So Belfiore grounds out. Heath goes to second base, and the batter is Royal Love. The next opponent already decided as number three Prescott and number 11 Catalina Foothills squared off earlier today here at Camelback Ranch. Catalina Foothills with the upset as they beat Prescott seven to five. And so the winner of this game will face Catalina Foothills at 4 o'clock on Friday afternoon right back here at Camelback Ranch. Royal Love in there and ready as Chris Frudenberg gets set. He'll check the runner at second base and the first pitch on the way. And that's fouled off the netting behind home plate for strike one. Runner at second and two away, top of the first inning. They'll look back to second. 
And the 0-1. That's on the outside corner for a strike, and it's nothing and two. So Aro had their 27-game winning streak snapped last Monday, but then back in the win column on Saturday in the first round of the playoffs, so they won 28 of 29. And that ball lifted down the left field side well out of play. And the count remains 0-2 on Royal Love. These two teams met back on March 2nd over at Sunny Slope. And Saguaro won that game 7-3. And in fact, if I remember correctly, thinking about it here, that uh, might have been the first game of the 27-game winning streak as the pitch misses one and two the count. And uh, no, that was actually the week before. So uh, Saguaro won that game over at Sunny Slope, then lost on March 5th at Boulder Creek. Then the winning streak started on March 10th. One and two the count, and Frudenberg delivers. And a breaking ball buckles Love. He's not able to pull the trigger, and the side is retired. No runs, no hits. A walk and a runner left at second after a half inning of play. It's the Vikings nothing, and the Sabercats coming up. Austin Anderson leads off for Saguaro in the bottom of the first inning, and the first one is low for ball one. Anderson starts in left field for Saguaro. Zach Gibbons will bat second and center. Chris Ackman at first base hits third. The 1-0 pitch. That's low, and it's two balls and no strikes. Brandon Demers is fourth for the Sabercats. Kyle Young bats fifth in right field. The shortstop, Matt Morris, is sixth. As the 2-0 pitch is over for a strike. It's 2-1, and one. and then a bottom third of the order for the Sabercats. Reed Austin, the DH, as he bats for Chris Frudenberg. John Demps at third base is eighth, and Ben Tingley ninth. The 2 1 pitch. It's outside and it's three balls and a strike. Connor Balfiore, the starting pitcher for the Sunny Slope Vikings. He's ready with his 3 1 pitch. And that swung on and missed, and it's 3 and 2. Three and two to the leadoff hitter, Austin Anderson. Oh, and that one shot over on the left side, and that's off the netting in front of the Sabercat dugout. or a 3-2, and that's a ground ball and a base hit into left field. Anderson singles to start the Sabercat first inning, and the batter will be Zach Gibbons. Sabercats wearing the all-whites again today like they did on Saturday. No score, bottom of the first inning as Gibbons is in and ready. Belfiore with the first pitch and it's high for ball one. Again, the winner of this will advance to the 4A1 state semifinals on Friday afternoon to face Catalina Foothills, the 1-0 pitch. That's over the outside corner for a strike and it's one and one. Fiore sets as he looks to first base. The 1-1 pitch. Over the outside corner, a strike, and it's 1-2. and two. We don't have updated stats for Saguaro as their last update was after the uh, April, I believe, 28th game. And uh, the Max Preps page 
not to update it either. There's a swing and a miss as Austin Anderson takes off. He steals second base. As Gibbons is out on strikes, and there's one away for Chris Ackman. Sunny Slope did not have their season stats posted at all on Max Preps, so not that they weren't updated. They didn't have anything posted at all. Which is interesting, I guess, kind of, uh, you know, it's the information age, but it is one more thing that a coach has to do or one more thing that the head coach has to delegate as the first one at Ackman is high for a ball. And it seems each year that goes by, more and more teams get it going. We'll run into some teams, particularly teams that struggle. And, you know, Sunny Slope at 20 and 8, that's why I guess I was kind of more surprised to uh, than anything that they didn't have something posted. But uh, some of the teams that struggle, you see them maybe updated after the first couple of weeks as Ackman hits a ball on the ground of the shortstop O'Neill. He's got it and on to first base in time as Anderson goes to third base on the play. And the batter will be Brandon Demarest. And by the way, the defense for the Vikings, Gleason, Fabricant, and Mahagan in the outfield. Bowman and O'Neill on the left side of the infield. Heath and Love on the right. And Oberg catching for Belfiore. But a team that uh, struggles, maybe has uh, a rough start or not expected to do very well. Sometimes they'll go on and you know, put the roster out there. And then you, know, you might be 20 games into the season and check their stats. And it's you know through four games or something like that. So it doesn't really give you much of an indication of how the team's doing or how the individual players are doing as Demers takes high for a ball. Runner at third base and two away in the bottom of the first inning. No score. And they, 4A1 state quarterfinals. The 1 0 pitch. Demers lays off, the pitch misses, and it's two balls and no strikes. Now the set and the 2 0. And a hard shot out to short, right through the legs of O'Neill, and that's into left center field, and the Sabercats are on the board in the bottom of the first inning, and E6 brings in a run and keeps the inning alive. Anderson scores. Demarest will come off as Teddy Rubin will run at first base as the courtesy runner. And the batter is Kyle Young. Sabercats get a run, an unearned run here in the bottom of the first inning, and now looking to make it hurt, try to string together a couple of more base hits. A step at a throw to first base. Belfiore going to keep an eye on Ruben over there. And this is where you have to kind of make a decision as a coach as to what you want to do with that runner, especially with a left-handed pitcher up there. Ruben does not go, and a breaking ball to Young is a cross for a strike. With two outs in the inning, you got a left-hander up there. If uh, you're going to have your runner go, he's got to go on the first move, even if the pitcher throws over to first base. Left-handed hitter up there, and the first baseman holding the runner on. There's a snap throw, and they got him. Ruben was leaning. He was going to go on first move and saw the throw coming over. And Belfiore picks him off, and that ends the inning for the Sabercats. One unearned run on one hit, plus one error. Nobody left, and after one, it's Sawara one and Sunny Slope nothing. Casey Bowman starts it off for the Vikings in the second inning as they send up five, six, and seven in the order. Bowman, the third baseman, in to face Chris Frudenberg, and the first one on the way, and it's a breaking ball. And it misses outside for ball one. Sabercats get an unearned run in the bottom of the first inning. They lead one to nothing. The 1 0 pitch. And a line drive and caught by Matt Morris, the shortstop. Bowman hit it hard, but Morris had to go just a couple of steps to his left to snag the line drive. Five, six. 
And Michael Mahegi in the right fielder for the Vikings. And pitch over for a strike. Sunny Slope four and two in their last six games. They lost to 4A2 Thunderbird on May 2nd, 11 to nine. And then they lost back on April 20th to Prescott, 10 to nine. One and one, the count on Mahagian. And a ground ball, and that's fouled off on the third base side, and the count's one and two. The one two pitch, and that one's fouled back. And the count stays one ball and two strikes. Another one-two pitch. And it bounces in there, and it's two balls and two strikes. One out base is empty in the top of the second. Sunny Slope trailing Saguaro one to nothing. The two-two pitch. That's bounced in. Three balls and two strikes. Number one seed, Sunrise Mountain. Facing off against number eight, Sienega, tonight at Phoenix Municipal Stadium. That's another one of the quarterfinals. And then number four, Sabino, and number 12, Pueblo, playing at High Corbett Stadium in Tucson tonight. And a 3-2 has popped up. Matt Morris, the shortstop, back in the outfield grass, still reaching back and uh, stays with it to put it away. And there's two outs. Anderson and Gibbons coming in, and I was kind of waiting for Anderson to call off Morris, but Matt had a beat on it. Anderson still maybe a couple of steps away from getting there, and so he lets Matt take it. And there's two down for Max Fabricant. And the first one swung on and missed for strike one. Two outs and the base is empty. Friedenberg has retired four in a row and five of the first six hitters. Gave up a one-out walk in the first inning to Robert Heath. Heath stopped at second base as the next one is low and inside, and it's one and one. The wind and the one-one pitch. Misses high and maybe outside, and it's two balls and a strike. To the wind and the 2 1 pitch. The fastball is high, three balls and a strike. Fabrican trying to reach for the Vikings. Ryan Oberg next as the pitch is over for a strike, and it's 3 and 2. A little break in the weather this week, and a nice night here at Camelback Ranch. A little breeze. Rolling into the press box as the pitch is foul out of play on the first base side. We stay at three balls and two strikes. We were at an afternoon game over at uh, Peoria Sports Complex, and even in the bright sunshine of the afternoon, still wasn't too bad out there at all. Another 3-2 pitch and another foul ball. This one back to the backstop, or to the screen anyway, behind home plate. Redenberg back to it, the kick and the 3-2. And that one foul back. And that one ends up in the seats. That one just cleared the netting behind home plate. Chris with another 3-2 and a breaking ball is high for ball four. Second walk surrendered. It is a two out walk as Fabricant goes to first base. And the batter is Ryan Oberg. Ryan 
Berg and a hit from the right side. And the first pitch on the inside corner under the hands for strike one. Two outs with a runner at first base in the top of the second. It's one nothing Saguaro. Step and a throw to first base and Fabricant back easily over there. He's only off the bag by a couple of steps. Now the set of the one strike pitch. And a fastball just off the outside corner called a ball and it's one and one. Set from Frudenberg, the runner goes, the 1-1 pitch, hit on the ground, and that's picked up. The throw on to first base, and the side is retired. We go to the bottom of the second, it's one to nothing. Kyle Young in for the Sabercats. In the bottom of the second inning, he was at the plate when Teddy Rubin was picked off first to end the first inning. And he's bunting, and it puts it down the third baseline, picked up by Bowman, the throw to first base, and that's in time. That ball came off the bat on the bun. I thought that uh, the third baseman, Bowman, would let that go foul, but instead it was riding the baseline. And so he came charging in, got it, and got rid of it in a hurry, and it was a close play over at first, but Young clearly out on the play. So one away in the bottom of the second for Matt Morris. And Morris takes the first pitch for a strike. The 0-1. Swung on and missed, and it's nothing in two. Reed Austin next for the Sabercats. Here comes the 0-2. And that ball hit well and out to center field. Fabricant on the run. He's not going to get to it. It's over his head. It's off the fence. And Morris is at second base. He's going to stop there, and it's a one-out double for Matt Morris. Just missed a solo home run as that one hit the top of the fence in left center. And now Morris at second for Reed Austin, who homered in the game on Saturday. It's Major League Dimensions, as you would expect here. It's 345 down the lines, 380 in the alleys, and 410 to straightaway center field. And again, Morris just missed the solo home run. If he had pulled the ball even slightly more than he did, that would have been over the fence as Austin takes high for ball one. So Arl leads one to nothing. Now runner in scoring position with one out. The turn back to second base, no throw. Now the set and the 1-0 pitch. And that swung on and a foul tip into the glove for a strike. It's one and one. One and one on Reed Austin. John Nemps next for the Sabercats. Balfiore ready as he looks back to second base in the one one pitch. Austin lays off a fastball that's up and out of the zone, and it's two balls and a strike. Yeah, look 
back to second. And the 2 1 pitch. A breaking ball that's high, and it's three balls and a strike. Three and one on Reed Austin. Sabercats up one to nothing in the bottom of the second. The 4A1 state quarterfinals from Camelback Ranch. Balfiore sets. Again, checks Morris at second base. The 3 1 pitch. And that's hit on the ground of the shortstop. O'Neill charges. He picks it up, throws on to first base in time for the second out. The ground ball hit slow enough that Morris was able to advance to third base. And now the Sabercats look to bring in a run with two outs. Nimps in there, ready to face Belfiore. And the first pitch, a fastball outside for ball one. Now the set and the 1-0 pitch. Another fastball, high and outside, 2-0. The next pitch foul back out of play, and the count's two and one. Morris had third base with two outs in the bottom of the second. Morris has doubled the second hit of the ball game for Saguaro. The two one. A check swing, and that's punched right back into center field. And Nimps delivers an RBI base hit. Matt Morris scores, and it's 2-0 Sabercats. Boy, that's just putting the bat head out there and putting it on the baseball. Yes, Nimps got the uh, barrel out there and sent it right back up the middle. And now he's on at first base for the number nine hitter, Ben Tingley. And then the first one at Tingley on the outside corner, a strike. The set from Balfiore and a step to first base and a throw late as Nimps is back in standing. Pitch inside, it's also low, and it's one ball and one strike. One and one on Ben Singley. The runner goes, swing and a miss. The throw to second base is late. That's deflected into left center field, and Nimps is going to get to third base. So a stolen base for Nimps and then an E2 on the wide throw sends Nimps to third base. And they count one and two on Ben Tingley. And a breaking ball is inside and low as it bounced in there. Two balls and two strikes. Cleared the count on the scoreboard. Now they're putting it back up there. Two and two the count on Tingley, trying to get the runner in from third. Sabercats have already scored once in the inning, and Tingley fouls a pitch 
out of play. Saguaro with a run in the first inning and now a run in the second. They lead 2-0, batting in the bottom of the second in the 4A1 state quarterfinals. The set and the 2-2 pitch. And a ground ball, and that's through the legs of the first baseman, Love, and into right field. And the Sabercats are living right here in the early going as Nymph scores. It is an E3. And Tingley is on at first base for Austin Anderson. A two-run second inning, and Sawara leads 3-0. Anderson singled, stole a base, and scored his first time up, and he takes a breaking ball for ball one. Malfiore sets the 1 0 pitch. That's low, and it's 2 and 0. The 2-0 instead of throw to first base. And Tingley back. The 2-0. And a swing and a miss on a fastball. That one uh, up and in a bit it looked like. And the count goes to 2-1. Catalina Foothills awaits the winner of this one. If Saguaro hangs on, they'll face Catalina Foothills in a rematch of the state championship game from last year as Anderson fouls the pitch off, and it's two balls and two strikes. Catalina Foothills, one of two teams with upset wins in the first round, at least based on the PowerPoint seating as Catalina Foothills beat number six Apollo. The 2 2 and a slow ground ball to the right side. Heath over to his left, throws on to first base, and the inning is over as Anderson grounds out. Sabercats get two runs on two hits. There was another uh, uh, Sunny Slope error and one runner left on after two. It's Saguaro three and Sunny Slope nothing. Nine one and two in the order for Sunny Slope in the top of the third as Chet Gleason leads off. It'll be Gleason, O'Neill, and Heath for Sunny Slope. And the first pitch, a fastball inside and low for ball one. And the 1-0 pitch, a high fly ball out to left field. Anderson back in front of the warning track. He's under it. And he makes the catch for out number one. And Colin O'Neill, the shortstop for the Vikings. And a ground ball, easy hop for Morris. He'll sidearm it to first base in time. Two down in the Vikings third inning. And the batter is Robert Heath. Heath walked his first time up. Takes the first pitch of fastball inside from Chris Frudenberg. It's ball one. Heath, a one-out walk in the first inning, was stranded at second. Max Fabricant, a two-out walk in the second inning. He was left at first. And now the count moves to two balls and no strikes. 3 nothing. Saguaro. Sunny Slope batting in the top of the third inning. The 2-0. That's outside. Three balls and no strikes. And 
the 3 0. Across for a strike, 3 and 1, as Chris Frudenberg tries to work his way back into the count. Heath walked on a 3 1 pitch in the first inning, now 3 and 1 here in the third, and the pitch lifted down the right field side. Ackman maybe with a play over there, and he caught it, reaching over the railing. Chris Ackman with the catch, and it is a three up, three down third inning for the Vikings. We go to the bottom of the third. Sunny Slope trails Saguaro three to nothing. Two, three, and four in the order for the Sabercats. They lead three nothing batting in the bottom of the third. Zach Gibbons will lead it off. And Gibbons takes the first pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Gibbons, Chris Ackman, and Brandon Demarest for the Sabercats in the third. And Gibbons going after the next one, lifts it into right field. Mahagian over to his left, and he's there for the first out in the Sabercat third inning. Now one out for Chris Ackman, who grounded out his first time up. And a fastball is outside for ball one. Dalfiore looking in, Oberg through the signs, and the 1-0 pitch. Breaking ball. Maybe a little bit low. Two balls and no strikes. The 2-0. A fastball high. Three balls and no strikes. You know, Ackman will have the green light here on 3-0 with the Sabercats up 3 nothing. See if he gets a pitch to hit the 3-0. That pitch near the outside corner anyway. It looked as though Oberg was reaching into the left-handed batter's box. Now the 3-1. And Ackman with a base hit, solid into right field as Mahagian gets it back in. A one-out base hit for Chris Ackman, the fourth hit of the night for the Sabercats. And with Chris aboard at first base and one out, the Sabercats send up Brandon Demarest. Brandon reached down an error his first time up. That brought in Austin Anderson in the first inning. First pitch over the outside corner for a strike. No runs, no hits, two errors for Sunny Slope. Three runs, four hits, no errors for Saguaro. Next pitch off the outside corner, and it's one and one. The 1-1. One, one. Uh, swung on and missed. Watch Balfiore a little closer here. He actually kind of looked like he flinched before he started his motion, and that's the first time I've noticed it. I don't know if I just hadn't seen it before or if he did something a little bit different there. Yeah, there was definitely something different. That ball down in the dirt. Ackman's going to try for a second, and he's in on the wild pitch. And the count goes to two balls and two strikes. The runner at second now with one out. Sabercats up 3 nothing. They want to cash in that runner in scoring position. Malfiore looks back to second. It is 2-2 delivery. Misses outside, and it's three balls and two strikes. Kyle Young next for the Sabercats.
And the set and the 3 2 to Brandon Demarest. Instead, time is called. Belfiore ready. Now sets. And the 3 2 pitch. And that's a fly ball hit well and out to right field. Mahagian on the run and makes the catch. Ackman will tag from second and go to third. And that'll put a runner at third and two away for Kyle Young. Kyle Young with a ground ball out to the shortstop O'Neill. The throw on to first base. And the Sabercats do not score in the third. No runs a hit and one left after three. Sawara leads Sunny Slope three to nothing. Heart of the order for Sunny Slope in the fourth inning as they try to figure out Chris Frudenberg. Connor Belfiore leads off. He grounded out his first time up, but he takes the first pitch at the knees for strike one. The 0 1. Now off the handle and a slow ground ball to third. Nimps has it. And Johns throw to first base right on the mark. And the leadoff hitter is retired in the fourth inning. Now the batter is Royal Love, who was called out on strikes to end the first inning for the Vikings. And the first one outside for ball one. The 1-0. Swung on and missed. It's a ball and a strike. The 1-1. Oh, that looked pretty good. Called a ball, and it's 2-1. Suaro with a run in the first and two in the second. They lead three nothing with Sonny Slow batting in the top of the fourth. The two one pitch is inside and it's three and one. Two of the three Sawara runs are unearned because of a couple of Sunny Slope errors as the pitch is over for a strike and it's three and two but Runs count just the same, so it's a 3 0 score for Saguaro. They've got the lead with Sunny Slope hitting in the top of the fourth inning, and that pitch misses, and it's ball four. Love walks. That's the third base runner of the ball game for the Vikings, all three of them on base by way of the walk. And the batter is Casey Bowman. Lined out his first time up. Frudenberg high with a fastball for ball one. The set and the 1 0. Popped up. Right side of the infield. It's Tingley back. Almost to the grass, still stayed on the infield dirt, and he makes the catch for out number two. Now two away for Michael Mahagian, who popped out to Morris in the second inning. Again with a swing and a miss for strike one. The 0 1 pitch. Anthony's for a strike, and it's nothing in two.
Love with the lead over at first base. The 0-2 pitch. Off the end of the bat and fouled out of play on the first base side. Gerdenberg looking in. He sets and the 0-2. Oh, and that one hits Mahagian, and he'll go to first base. It got him maybe on the back of the hand or the wrist. I don't know, somewhere in there. That brings up Max Fabricant with two on and two out in the fourth inning. First one spiked in there. And the runner from second base, Love, takes off. He goes to third on the wild pitch. Mahagian must not have seen the baseball. He didn't get a read on it, and so he stays put at first. That'll keep the force in order at second base. But Sonny Slope has a runner to third base for the first time in the ball game. It's runners at the corners with two away for Fabricant as the first pitch was a ball, so 1-0 the count. Chris Frudenberg ready as he looks to first base, and the 1-0 pitch is swung on and missed. It's 1-1. One one. Fabricant walked in the second inning. They'll look over to first base, and they step in a throw that way, and... Diving back is Mahagian. 3 nothing Saguaro. The Vikings with two aboard in the top of the fourth inning. The 1-1. One -one. This is outside on the fastball. 2-1 the count. Two one pitch. That's a slow tapper on the first base side, picked up by Frudenberg, and he'll aggressively tag Fabricant for the final out. No runs, no hits, a walk, and a hit batter. Two left for Sunny Slope. Middle of the ball game, the Vikings trail the SaberCats three to nothing. Matt Morris begins the fourth inning for Saguaro. Reed Austin and John Nimps will follow. And a swing and a miss for strike one. So our leading three to nothing. Batting in the bottom of the fourth inning. The winner of this game will move on to the 4A Division I state semifinals. As Morris hits a two hopper out to the shortstop O'Neill. That's off the heel of his glove. And Morris aboard at first base. Oh, and they put a hit up on the board there for Morris. And so we'll go with that. The base hit, it's the fifth. They actually missed a hit on the scoreboard for Saguaro in the second inning. As Morris doubled, they didn't put a hit up for him. As that throw goes to first base. So it's actually five base hits for Saguaro, and they've got four on the scoreboard. But I saw the three change into a four, and they actually put the H up on the board to signify the hit for Morris on that play. Breaking ball to Reed Austin is outside for ball one. Catalina Foothills, the number 11 seed upset number three, Prescott seven to five earlier today and they await the winner of this one. The two teams will play at four o'clock on Friday as Austin fouls the pitch out of play and the count's one and one. Look over to first base, the 1-1 one -one pitch. The fastball outside, and it's two balls and a strike. And 
Now the set in the 2-1. That's low, and it's three balls and a strike. I don't know about a sunny slope schedule, but uh, interesting for Saguaro. They play, this is their fifth game in a uh, spring training stadium this season. They played twice at Scottsdale Stadium and twice at Salt River Fields at Talking Stick as Austin takes a strike and it's three and two. And although each of the fields are different uh, dimensions and backgrounds and things like that, uh, playing on the big field and under the lights and all that, uh, probably a pretty good idea to get them in there for a few times. Once they get to the state playoffs, then it's not such a big deal. I mean, it's still a big deal as Austin fouls it out of play, and it's still exciting, but it's, uh, it's not as though they're walking into a spring training stadium for the very first time in the season. And so, again, this is the fifth game in a stadium for the Sabercats. Morris with the lead at first, another 3-2 on the way. And that is strike three. I think Austin knew it as Belfiore catches the inside corner. And there's one away for John Nemtz. Nemtz had an RBI single and stole a base and then scored a run in the second inning. First pitch to Nimps, call the ball. We'll see if the Sabercats have Morris run here. I would think if they do, it would be on a hit and run, not on a straight steal. The 1 0. He doesn't go, and the pitch is inside. It's 2 0. And my thinking there is uh, you're at the bottom of the lineup and you want to get to the number nine hitter here in the fourth inning if you can, so that if the inning does end, you're back at the top of the order to start the fifth. If you get a guy thrown out, as, uh, that's off the handle and popped up out behind the bag at second. Heath back for the catch, and there's two away. But if you get a runner thrown out, and then the number eight hitter is out, then you lead off the fifth inning, nine, one, and two. Now Ben Tingley with a runner at first and two away. And the first pitch is inside for ball one. Tingley reached out an error in the second inning. Three nothing Saguaro, Sabercats batting in the bottom of the fourth inning in the 4A Division I state quarterfinals. The set from Balfiori and the 1-0 pitch. That's over for a strike. It's one and one. Tangley awaits the one one. And that swung out and missed. They count a ball and two strikes. And now the one two to Ben Tingley. The runner goes and the ball fouled out of play. See, so with a two strike count and two outs, in effect, just about uh, every time you're running, it's a hit and run situation. Eh, not quite, I guess. But uh, the hitter's going to be protecting and uh, going after anything close. Goes again, and this one fouled back. Well, now Morris has gone twice in a row. Sunny Slope's got a couple of things they can do. Obviously, Belfiore can pick over there. And the other thing you could always call a pitch out. The one two, they don't do either. The runner stays put, and it's a breaking ball, and it's two and two. Two balls, two strikes on Tingley with a runner at first and two away in the bottom of the fourth. 
the pitch and a swing and a miss. Tingley strikes out and the inning is over. A leadoff base hit for the Sabercats, but they can't move him past first and after four. So our lead Sunny Slope three to nothing. Eight, nine, and one in the order for the Vikings in the fifth inning. As Ryan Oberg is in and grounds the first one foul on the third base side. We're here at Camelback Ranch, the spring training home of the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Chicago White Sox. The 0-1 fouled off at the plate and it's nothing and two. Oberg grounded out to end the second inning. The 0-2 and a high fly ball. Really shallow in center field. It's the shortstop Morris going back and he makes another nice play. Zach Gibbons uh, coming in on the dead run and I don't think he would have gotten to the baseball. So good thing that Morris was able to get out there for Saguaro and he puts it away for the first out. Now the batter is Chet Gleason. I think it's interesting looking at the brackets for 4A Division I as the first pitch is outside for ball one. You would think that you would uh, give the number one seed whatever advantage that uh, they could get or whatever they would, I guess, deserve being the number one seed as that pitch is a strike and it's one at one. And it's just interesting to me that Saguaro as the number two seed is playing at Camelback Ranch today which is where the semifinals are and where the championship game will be this weekend. This counts two and one, but the number one seed Sunrise Mountain playing their quarterfinal game at Phoenix Municipal Stadium. So interesting that they play over there and then they'll come to Camelback Ranch and see a different site on Friday. There's the next one's outside three and one. I guess the semifinal game, they'd be playing against another team that has not been to Camelback Ranch. So that's even from that standpoint. And then by the time you get to Saturday, they'll have one game in the stadium where the team coming out of the bottom half of the bracket will have two. Another walk given up as Gleason moves to first base. That is walk number four for Chris Frudenberg to go along with one hit batter. So he's allowed five base runners. But uh, Sunny Slope still without a hit here in the top of the fifth inning. Colin O'Neill at the plate with one on and one out. We gave you the matchup, says the runner takes off. The pitch is over for a strike as Gleason got a huge jump. And O'Neill saw that he got a good jump and didn't want to mess with it and foul off the ball and lose that runner in scoring position. So he takes one down the middle for a strike. Now punches this one into right center field. It's going to be a tough play, and it's out of the reach of the center fielder, Gibbons. There's the first base hit of the ball game for the Vikings. And Gleason goes to third as O'Neill is at first base with two away, or with a one away rather, and the batter is Robert Heath. And checking on Gibbons out there in center field as he laid out diving, trying to come up with that baseball. And he's just now getting back into a spot in center field. I guess you can uh, put that hit on me. I'm the one I finally mentioned that they had not had a base hit here in the fifth inning. And uh, sure enough, right after that, O'Neill with the first base hit. So he's on at first, Gleason at third with one away. And Robert Heath in there for Sunny Slope. And once again, the Vikings have the tying run at the plate. Stabbing a throw to first base, and O'Neill is back. Sunny Slope had the tying run at the plate in the fourth inning with two outs and could not score. Now the tying run at the plate with one out in the fifth. And we'll see what happens here as the pitch to Heath is over for a strike. We gave you the quarterfinal matchups. See if we can run down the first round scores. Mix them in here between pitches as Sunrise Mountain 
12-2 winners over number 16, Copper Canyon, in the first round as that throw goes to first base. Number 8, Sienega beat number 9, Nogales, 6-3. Number 12, Pueblo upset number 5, Canyon Del Oro, 3-1. Number 4, Sabino knocked off number 13, Bradshaw Mountain, 6-1, the final in that one. And we'll get to the bottom half of the bracket here in a moment as the 0-1 pitch is on the way, and that's hit hard on the ground to Tingley. He bobbles. He'll flip it to second, the throw to first. Not in time. Ackman trying to buy the call over there. They do get the runner at second. O'Neill is forced four to six. It is an RBI fielder's choice for Robert Heath as Gleason scores. And Sunny Slope is on the board in the fifth inning, trailing three to one. And now Connor Balfiore with a runner at first and two away, a run in for the Vikings. And he goes after the first one and fouls it out of play. Number three, Prescott beat number 14, Queen Creek, 17 to four in five innings on Saturday in the first round. Catalina Foothills, the number 11 seed, beat number six, Apollo, seven to three. And then I mentioned Sunny Slope, seven, six winners over Kellis as that ball is grounded foul on the third base side. And Sawar, of course, the 6-0 winner over number 15, Cactus Shadows. And we do have the one score in already in the quarterfinals as Number 11, Catalina Foothills, already knocking off number six, Apollo. Upsets number three, Prescott, seven to five. In a game here earlier today, that ball down in the dirt. Demarest got it, he throws to second, and out is the call. Tingley and Morris both over there, and it was Morris that was able to reach over and apply the tag, and the inning is over. But the Sunny Slope Vikings score one in the fifth. They do it on one hit. And nobody left. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Sunny Slope trails Saguaro, three to one. Top of the order for Saguaro in the bottom of the fifth inning. And uh, I'm sure they'd like to get the offense clicking again. Anderson going after the first one, fouls it off. Austin a single in the first and a ground out in the second, one for two today. Sabercats have been held scoreless the last couple of innings, and they've had base runners. The 0-1, that's over the corner for a strike, and it's nothing in two. So Arl just one earned run out of the three they've scored. The run in the first was unearned, and one of the two in the second was unearned. The 0-2, and a swing and a miss. Belfiore strikes out Anderson. It's the first out of the Sabercat fifth inning, and the batter is Zach Gibbons. But uh, Saguaro had a one-out single in the third from Chris Ackman. He got around to third base, but was left there. And then Matt Morris, a leadoff single in the fourth, and he never got past first base. First pitch is inside for ball one. The 1-0. That's outside. Two balls and no strikes. Gibbons struck out of the first and flat out in the third. The 2-0 pitch. Fouled out of play on the first base side, and it's 2-1. and one. one run, one hit, two errors for Sunny Slope. Three runs, five hits. And no errors for Saguaro. The 2-1 pitch. Another one fouled out of play on the right side, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Two-two pitch, and Gibbons with a line drive. That's into right center field for a base hit. Zach with his first hit of the night and the sixth of the ball game for the SaberCats. And the batter is Chris Ackman. A 
Kind of with a swing and a miss as uh, looked like Belfiore maybe threw him a change up there. Now the set and the 0 1. And that's a line drive, and that's into right field for a base hit. Gibbons will come around second base and try for third. He'll be in as the throw is cut off. A base hit for Chris Ackman, his second of the night. And the Sabercats put runners at the corners with one out for Brandon Demarest. First one on the way to Brandon. It's low for ball one. Demers reached on an error in the first and flat out in the third. And the 1-0 pitch. And that's knocked foul out of play on the right field side. It's 1-1. One and one. Ball and a strike on Demarest. Three to one. Saguaro in the fifth. Breaking ball. That's going to bounce and get away. And that'll get a run in as Gibbon scores. And Ackman to second base on the wild pitch. So after Sunny Slope gets a run in the top of the fifth inning, Saguaro gets it right back in the bottom of the fifth. And now looking to do at least one better with Ackman at second and one out. They'll look back to second base, the 2 1 pitch. Uh, it's low for ball three. Three and one on Demarest. Kyle Young next for Saguaro. Sabercats lead it four to one now in the bottom of the fifth. Fiore ready. The 3-1. And Demarest with a line drive out to center field. That's over the center field of Fabricant's head. Ackman's going to come around and score easily. Demarest coming around second base, and he slams on the brakes. He'll go back to second. It's an RBI double, and Saguaro leads 5-1. And now time called from the... Sunny Slope dugout. Jeff Shillington, the head coach, coming out of the dugout, and we get a break in the bottom of the fifth. Five to one, Sabercats. See so the timeout over, and Kyle Young into bat for Saguaro. Ball bounced in there and blocked by Oberg for ball one, as Teddy Rubin is the courtesy runner at second base for Brandon Demarest. Three straight base hits for Saguaro after a strikeout start of the inning. Gibbons singled, Ackman singled, and Gibbons went to third on the play. Then a wild pitch brought Gibbons home and sent Ackman to second. And then Brandon Demarest with an RBI double scored Ackman. And now Young bats with the runner at second and one out. Two runs in for the Sabercats in the fifth. They lead five to one. One-zero pitch. That's a cross for a strike, and it's one and one. The bullpen is quiet for Sunny Slope, and just as I say that, pitcher comes popping out of the dugout. And a breaking ball bounced in there. Young lays off. It uh, looks like it's Will Schoffelman that uh, is on a jog down to the bullpen out past right field. Now 
Belfiore with a 2-1 pitch. And a ground ball. That's fouled off on the first base side, and the count's 2-2. Two and two. Two balls and two strikes to Kyle Young. Matt Morris next for the Sabercats. The set and the 2-2 pitch. And a fastball just misses. Sunny slope one of that pitch. But it's called a ball and the count's three and two. Young 0 for two, by the way. A couple of ground outs in his two plate appearances. Balfiori looking in, now sets. The 3 2. And a slow ground ball on the left side, picked up by Bowman. He'll throw it on to first base in time for out number two. Ruben goes to third on the play, and it brings up Matt Morris. Matt with a double and a run scored in the second inning, and then he singled in the fourth. Pitch over for a strike to Morris. The 0-1 pitch. It just misses. It's one and one. One, one pitch. Fastball high, two balls in a strike. Now the set of the two one. And that's a line drive and a base hit into center field out of the reach of O'Neill. Fabricant will bring it back in, but Demarest courtesy runner Rubin scores. It's a three-run fifth inning after the RBI single for Matt Morris. And the Sabercats lead 6-1. to one. Now here's Reed Austin for the Sabercats. And Austin is going to foul the first one back out of play. This one will get into the seats. Nothing and one on Reed Austin. He grounded out in the second, was called out on strikes in the fourth. Pitch inside, and it's one ball and one strike. Look over to first base, and the 1-1. One -one. And Austin drives that ball out to center field. Fabricant going back and falls down, but hangs on. And... Uh, Records the final out in the fifth inning. The Sabercats, though, open it up a bit as they score three times on four hits. They leave one and through five from Camelback Ranch. It's Saguaro six and Sunny Slope one. Connor Belfiore, the leadoff hitter in the sixth inning for the Sunny Slope Vikings. And going after the first one. Pulls it foul on the third base side. Balfiori is grounded out to John Nimps at third base twice. 
And now we got a stoppage here as the ball, that last foul ball ended up on the playing field. Nothing and one on Belfiore. He was at the plate when Heath was out, trying to advance to second after a ball that bounced. He was trying to go on what would have been a wild pitch, but he was thrown out. And that pitch over the outside corner for a called third strike. Belfiore, the first out in the sixth inning. That's just the second strikeout for Chris Frudenberg. He has forced Sunny Slope to put the ball in play all night. They got a strikeout in the first inning, and that's uh, the only other one. The last out of the first, and now the first out of the sixth. And the first one to Royal Love is bounced in for ball one. Love called out on strikes in the first, and then he walked in the fourth. There's a ground ball out to second. Tingley's got it. Fires it on to first base, and there's two away in the sixth. The batter is Casey Bowman. Bowman, the third baseman for the Vikings, lined out to Morris in the second inning and popped out to Ben Tingley in the fourth. First pitch on the corner for a strike. This might be the last inning for Chris Frudenberg as that pitch is over for a strike. You know, you think about it from Saguaro's standpoint, they played last Monday against Queen Creek, didn't play again until Saturday, and they got a complete game from Travis Steinheiser. And so they got some arms that. Uh, haven't had game action for a little while. As that pitch was fouled off, I think that was off the shoulder of the plate umpire. And so because of that, you know, if it was a shutout situation, if the uh, no-hitter was intact or something like that, then maybe Frudenberg might uh, come out for the seventh. And this is speculation. He may come out and uh, throw the entire seventh inning. But... Soro does have bullpen activity as Bowman fouls the pitch off. And you figure Chris through five and two thirds here. You know, you get to a state championship game, and if you need arms, you figure everybody's available, even on no rest. Even anybody that throws Friday would probably be available Saturday as the next one is low. But if. Uh, you know, if Chris is probably finished for the week, then uh, you got to get through planning on anyway two games in 14 innings Friday and Saturday, and you want uh, to make sure you got fresh arms, but you also want to make sure you don't have any rusty arms. And so we'll see if, in fact, the Sabercats will go to the bullpen in the seventh inning. Two and two to count on Casey Bowman. Chris Frudenberg trying to wrap it up nicely here in the sixth inning. And another one punched out of play on the first base side. Sabercats definitely can uh, breathe a little easier after a three-run fifth inning. Turned a 3-1 lead into a 6-1 lead. Pitch bounced in there. I've got three and two, but uh, scoreboard's got two and two. I might have missed one there, or they might have missed one. We'll see if we can find out. Well, we'll never know now as it's a ground ball to Morris at short. Throws it low, and Ackman picks it out at first base. A 6-3 ground out, another three-up, three-down inning. And uh, after a five-and-a-half, Sunny Slope trail Saguaro, 6-1. to one. Eight, nine, and one in the order for the Saber Cats in the bottom of the sixth. They'll face a new pitcher as Will Schaffelman is on to pitch the sixth inning for Sunny Slope, and he gets a tapper back to him. Boy, dropped the elbow there a little bit, and I uh, thought he might float that one over the head of the first baseman, Love, but it's on the target. 
at first. So there's one pitch and one out in the Sabercats sixth inning. And the batter is Ben Tingley. I'll give you the unofficial pitching line for Connor Belfiore. As the first one to Tingley is over for a strike. Connor goes five innings, allows nine hits, six runs, four earned. No walks, four strikeouts. The 0 1. Outside with a fastball, and it's 1 and 1. It'll be 6, 7, and 8 in the order for the Vikings in the seventh inning. As Tingley hits one on the ground, that's scooped up by Bowman, the third baseman, and his throw to first in time. Two down. Two away, back to the top of the order for Austin Anderson. Sabercats got an unearned run in the second. One earned and one unearned, I should say one unearned in the first and then one each in the second. They led 3-0 after two. Boy, the plate umpire missed Anderson swinging there. It was a check swing, and he asked for help. I think he got blocked as the catcher, Oberg, lifted up on him a little bit. So nothing and one on Anderson. Yeah, swing and a miss, and it was, uh, it's now 0-2, but it was 3-0 after two innings. And then Sonny Slope with a run in the top of the fifth inning, cut it to 3-1. To so Warrell scored three in the bottom of the fifth. Led 6-1, to one, and that's where we're at in the bottom of the sixth inning. The 0-2 is outside, and it's one ball and two strikes. Next pitch inside, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Two and two on Austin Anderson, one for three today. And that pitch on the outside corner for a called third strike as Schaufelman comes in and retires all three hitters. We go to the seventh, Sawara leads Sunny Slope six to one. Michael Mahagan starts it off for Sunny Slope in the seventh inning, and uh, sure enough, they. Sabercats make a pitching change as Kane McCaslin is on to try to finish it up here in the seventh inning. The 1 0 pitch. That's a cross for a strike, and it's 1 and 1. Chris Frudenberg goes six innings for the Sabercats, allows just one base hit, one run that was earned, four walks, two strikeouts, and one hit batter. The next pitch high, and it's 2 and 1 on Mahagian, Fabricant, and Oberg scheduled to follow for the Vikings. The 2-1 pitch off the handle of the bat popped up into foul territory. No altitude on that one, and Nymphs had no chance to get to it. It drops for a foul ball, and it's 2-2. Two and two. two balls and two strikes to the leadoff hitter in the Vikings' seventh inning. they got to get a bunch of base runners here. That's off the end of the bat, and... Out to second base, Tingley gets rid of it in a hurry, and the leadoff hitter is retired in the seventh inning, and there's one away. I couldn't tell from up here. You know, the angles change from what we're used to at uh, high school games, and, at, you know, at Saguaro, it's the kind of the lower bleachers and so forth, and I couldn't tell for sure if that got deflected by McCaslin or not. He tried to get to it, but I don't know if it hit off his glove. If it did, he gets an assist down the play, but uh, we mark it down at least for now as a 4-3 ground out as Max Fabricant takes inside for ball one. Six to one Sabercats. Two outs to go to advance to the semifinals as the next one is high and it's 2-0. and oh. Again, the winner of this one will face Catalina Foothills on Friday at 4 o'clock. Right back here at Camelback Ranch, the pitch over for a strike, and it's two and one. And that 
pitch fouled back and out of play, and it's two and two. One out of the bases empty, two to the count. And a slow tapper on the third base side. Nimps is going to have to get rid of it in a hurry. He does, but it's not in time. It's an infield single. As Max Fabricant runs pretty well, and he got down the line in a hurry. So he's on at first base for Ryan Oberg. Oberg at ground out and a pop out and two at bats. And the pitch on the corner for a strike, and it's 0 and 1. The 0 1. That's high. One ball and one strike, so. But Kaslin on to pitch here, trying to get an innings worth of work in. And the next pitch misses for a ball, and it's two and one. And a breaking ball over for a strike, and it's two and two. Sabercats still have guys kind of milling around down in the bullpen. That might be to just get them some work as much as anything else, kind of a bullpen session as that ball is fouled out of play, way up into the seats. I think it's Daniel Ackman that's throwing in the bullpen right now for Soaro. Runner goes on the 2-2, swing and a miss, throw to second base. And safe at second. Sabercats nearly got to strike him out, throw him out, double play to end the ball game, but instead, Oberg strikes out. Fabricant steals second, and he's in scoring position for Chet Gleason. Vikings down to their final out here in the seventh inning. That first one bounced in, blocked on the backhand by Demarest for ball one. Well, it's tough here in 4A and uh, the lower levels as well. It's a single elimination tournament, and so the win or go home is kind of the situation. Pitch over for a strike, and it's one and one. I don't know that you could do it at the lower levels just based on number of players on the team and so forth, but at the 5A level, and I think at 4A, you could probably get away with the double elimination. I mean, they do it at 5A. A pitch for a strike, and it's 1 and 2. 5A1 and 5A2, both in the double elimination tournament, and I guess starting next year, it goes to a 24-team tournament. And there's a swing and a miss, and that'll do it as Gleason strikes out. And the ball game is over for the Vikings in the seventh. No runs a hit and one left. And we go final as Saguaro beats Sunny Slope by a final score of six to one. And the totals on the ball game for Sunny Slope, one run on two hits, two errors and five left. For Saguaro, six runs on nine base hits. No errors for the Sabercats. They leave four runners on base. The winning pitcher is Chris Frudenberg. The loss is charged to Connor Belfiore. No save, although Kane McCaslin pitches the seventh inning, allows just the one base hit and no runs. Sunny Slope finishes their season at 20 and 9. And the Sabercats go to 32 and 4 on the season and advance to the 4A1 state semifinals where they will face Catalina Foothills on Friday at 4 o'clock. So that'll do it. Again, our final score is Saguaro 6 and Sunny Slope 1 from Camelback Ranch in Glendale. Todd Garbison for Southwest Sports Network saying so long. We'll talk to you Friday afternoon at 4 against Catalina Foothills.